So tonight I thought I'd do a video on how to use salt with watercolour and I'm just going to do in my genre landscape and, and then we'll use some of this salt. It's a really great thing for effects and we'll go from there. So um, what I'm going to do is just wet the page a bit. All the things that I use and the colours will be in the description below. I'm just going to wet this whole page nice and wet all over. And then I'm just going to do a bit of a, I suppose, a bit of a, an abstract landscape. I might just bring in a little bit of a light mix of uh, uh, Winds Blue Red Shade and Light Red. So we'll just bring that in here. And then I might just grab a different brush for a second. So it's nice and wet. A little bit of this salt, and we'll just lay it down where we want it. Beautiful. And you've got to do this while it's nice and wet, and we'll pick up the pigment and, and, and soak it right up. So we'll just leave it there for a bit, and um, you guys don't have to wait, and then we'll, we'll come back. So I am using this in this painting to create the effect of snow in a snowstorm up in the mountains. But I've seen people use it for lots of different things. So you just need to think about how you're going to use it in the type of landscapes you like to paint. So while we're waiting for that uh, salt to soak it all up, we're just going to do a bit of some abstracty foreground here. So I'm just going to dry this, okay? 
So just one thing that you want to make sure uh, when you've done the salt is that either you dry it thoroughly with a hairdryer or you leave it for a long time because if you start trying to um, swish it off the page and it's and it's still a little bit damp underneath you'll just create all these streaks underneath and it won't be great so either leave it for a long long time or dry it really thoroughly with a hairdryer so I'll just keep going and I'll see you in a sec. So we've just zoomed in a bit here for you guys to be able to see all the different marks of that salt made. Like even around where some of the crystals sat, you can see there's a little bit more cobalt blue that sat there compared to the light red. It's pretty amazing. If we move over to here, then we can see there's some slightly different marks here with different paints. So different paints will behave differently. And obviously, uh, if you've got really strong pigment, then the contrast between where the salt has taken up the pigment versus where the pigment still sits will be greater. So if I had have put salt down here, in this bottom part here, then you would have really known, you can even see there was a few pieces of salt that landed on there, and that really made a big difference. So obviously if you wanted huge contrast, you'd use stronger pigment. Right, so I'm just going to turn this into a bit of a landscape. We might just, I could obviously use a pencil or, or have some sort of reference guide. And one last thing that you can do as well that is a good effect is uh, when it's really dry, so you've dried the whole thing like it is really dry right here, you can get a spray bottle like this and you can just spray into that area right there, usually from a bit more of a distance probably, you know, so not, not right up close like that, but just out of shot at the moment. So not very far, you know, not that far away. And then I give it a good spray. Obviously depends on your spray bottle. You might just purposely sort of do half a spray that will make sort of slightly bigger droplets come out. So you can decide after you get used to your your spray bottle what to do. And then again you can look at an angle to see where there's dollops I suppose of water. Wait for it a bit and then you can wipe them out. And that will do a similar thing again slightly different. So you've got to make sure that you dry it you've got to make sure that you um, have dried the paper thoroughly for it to work the best and then if you go oh it didn't work well enough this time I want to do it again then you would dry it and, and then do it again cool well thanks for joining me in uh, how to use salt with watercolour tonight. It creates some great effects and you guys can be thinking about uh, how you might use it in your paintings.
one last thing I want to try here, I don't know if it's going to work, is you're up in the mountains, you know, you're doing an approach like to, to Mont Blanc or something like that, and often you're starting when it's completely dark. So, you know, 1, 2 a.m. And I've just got this funny feeling that somewhere here, there is a moon. Mm. didn't really work then because I almost I almost dug the push the pigment into the page and because I use Reeves BFK it's got less sizing in it which means that you can push the pigment into the paper a bit easily but anyway you get the you get the gist bit of a moon coming up as you're approaching the mountain. Many years ago when I actually got to climb mountains. Right, thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, remember, like I, I said in the last episode, if, if you guys paint any of these paintings and want me to check them out, then um, hashtag Scott Swinson on Instagram and uh, and I'll find you. I'll obviously pick up on the painting and then I'll be able to comment and and say really great work. So thanks for subscribing and following and watching and I hope you find these enjoyable and I'll see you in the next episode. Good night, see ya.